again, everybody. Barry Hyatt here in Scottsville at the University of Kentucky Extension Office with my good friend Janet Johnson. Today, Janet, we're talking green beans with a little bit of a twist, I think, aren't we? It's not your grandmother's green beans today, <laughs> Barry. Definitely. We're used to slow cooking green beans or even steaming them, perhaps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the best possible flavor. But here we're going to look at a combination with a quick technique called stir fry yes. but using green beans now a lot of stir fry recipes do not call for this green vegetable okay. they'll use broccoli mm -hmm. they'll use other green vegetables right. but the green bean is kind of left out mm -hmm. and often if you go to an oriental restaurant you'll see green beans that have sesame on them and oil that mm -hmm. have been steamed and maybe not the healthiest technique but we're mm -hmm. going to add that to a stir fry dish today mm -hmm. and we encourage everyone out there to experiment with their garden vegetables because stir fry is a great way to use what you have in the garden mm -hmm. in a mixture. Sure. Yeah. So and, let's. And now get the garden has got plenty of uh, really great vegetables right now too. We do, and we're we're delighted today to showcase some great green beans from Bennett Family Farms here in Allen County. Mm -hmm. And Barry, I bet you've never had a rattlesnake green bean, have you? Probably no. not. No. <laughs> and that's a, a cool variety that has a little bit of color that actually, when you cook it, it tends to go away. But it it's a flavor, a mm -hmm. flavor, and so. When you shop at a farmer's market, people should really try to look for varieties and mm -hmm. talk varieties, mm -hmm. not just, I want some green beans. <laughs> know the type of variety of green bean, whether it's a tenderette or in this case, rattlesnake mm -hmm. that we're using today from okay. Bennett Family Farms. And ask for varieties that your family loves. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a, a different way to shop because there's so many interesting things out there. Mm -hmm. So rattlesnake green beans are what we're using All today right. in Sounds this good. stir fry. Now one thing about uh, green beans or some other vegetables is that and it, you can see of course that we need to look at green beans and do something to them before we add them to stir fry. Right. Now you don't often do that with broccoli or cauliflower and some of those vegetables mm -hmm. but here we need to snap the ends off of, mm -hmm. course, of course and uh, with some green beans you'll need to string, string them, them as well oh, yeah. even though this one has very little string a more mature bean this one will have very little. The best bean for stir fry actually Barry is going to be this one versus is this one. Is and right? I think folks can see okay. the, the thicker the pod, the more mature the bean, the less tender it's going to be in the stir fry okay. and the tougher. Okay. So what we want to do is we really want to look for the more tender green beans and if you're actually choosing you might even say oh yeah I kind of like that baby or immature mm -hmm. bean for that. Or skinny and, ones maybe. Or skinny ones yeah. and very often with these tiny tiny mature beans you really don't have to snap the ends off because okay. they have no strings so it's right. a time saver okay. and it adds a different texture and you're mm -hmm. going to see today that we've actually used some different sizes sure so that we can have some different sizes okay. so again look for green beans some of the heirloom green beans are probably not going to be the bean you'd want to use in the stir fry now okay. heirloom variety is a half runner mm -hmm. that trails up and you have to stake you know, I grew up with half runners. Mm -hmm. They're delicious, mm -hmm. but not so good for a stir fry okay. because you want right. more of the pod. Just like if you buy, again, the snow peas, you want the flat pod peas. You don't really want a big pea in there. Okay. You want the pod more so. Okay. Same thing with green beans. Okay. So what we've done prior to coming on air today is that we have snapped an end off mm -hmm. and we have put the beans in a medium saucepan, okay. covered them with, with water, brought okay. that to a boil, okay. and all we've done is cook those about three minutes. Mm -hmm. All we're wanting to do is just kind of stop the enzyme action from being tough, hold the color, mm -hmm. and you can see that they're a brighter, bright green, bright oh, yeah. green mm -hmm. interesting color here. And then we immediately want to use ice berry and mm -hmm. ice water. So put your, put your ice in your water, in your sink, before you get mm -hmm. ready to start. Then when the beans have boiled for three minutes, mm -hmm. you immediately bring them out, mm -hmm. pour them down in a colander that's submersed mm -hmm. in the ice water, right and bang, it holds the color. And okay. that's a blanching process for okay. freezing too. If we were gonna freeze green beans, we do the same process. Okay. So, All right. ice Good cold job. water is a great secret. So that's the pre-prep that we've done to get the beans ready. And then you add your favorite vegetables. Now I like peppers, so to go with the green instead of a green pepper, since we're using green beans, we're yes. going with red and yellow to add mm -hmm. a lot of nice color. Yeah, sure. And we're gonna go with what we call the Casper vegetables, which are <laughs> white vegetables. You you young people have no idea about Casper the Friendly yeah, Ghost. Exactly, right? yeah. Yeah. So we're doing some all white here, but that's garlic and onions, and I 
mind throwing a little mushroom okay. in? Okay, good deal. And you might do a meaty mushroom if this is going to be a really hearty main dish, like a portobello mushroom, okay. a baby bella. Okay. And sliced up. Those would add more texture and uh, meatiness to mm -hmm. the dish. But nevertheless, we've got uh, these vegetables ready to go, and we're going to mix up a stir fry sauce. And let me show you how easy that is. Barry, in the meantime, I'm going to get you going. And okay. everybody remembers that when you go to the farmer's market, you may see an onion that looks like this. Mm -hmm. They're not all that pretty at the <laughs> farmer's market, but these are great onions. And all you need to do is peel those onions and cut the ends off, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. And some of the onions, especially the younger ones, you can use mm -hmm. uh, this this part, this stem, stem as well, sure. absolutely. Well, so, but know that you were going to peel it. Don't be afraid of onions that you see that look like this. Okay. They're going to be great and they're going to be fresh. Doesn't matter how they look, they're going to taste better than they look. I'm That's sure. yeah. right. They're going to pretty up. They're going to clean up well, Barry. <laughs> That's the truth. So I'm going to start on a little stir fry sauce and I'm going to let you okay. hold these and get ready okay. to put that in. Sure. We're letting the oil heat over a medium high heat not hot. Now the oil you use makes a difference in stir fry. You want to use an oil that has a very high heat capacity. Mm -hmm. Some oils, they're delicious in flavor, like a peanut oil, they're great, but if you put them on high heat, whew, smoke, 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 smoke. Right, so you want and medium heat. Exactly, you want a medium heat with a wok, and you want to use an oil that has a very high temperature for smoking. Okay. And we're going to use canola oil today. Okay. You could use olive oil, you can use peanut oil and mm -hmm. other oils, but just bes beware. You know, okay. hold on, watch your oil there. This one has a very high heating, so I can come over here and kind of do some things. Okay. You're holding our vegetables. Now, in order to make your own stir fry sauce, it's very simple. Now, you can buy Buttle stir fry sauce, and I think we've even used some here mm -hmm. on the program sure. before. Very convenient but a little more pricey than this. And what I'm doing today is doing about two tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of brown sugar, and two teaspoons of fresh ground pepper, okay? okay. Uh, fresh ground pepper really adds a lot of flavor to this dish. Mm -hmm. So all I'm gonna do is put that in a bowl, kind of your dry ingredients, and you're just gonna kind of mix those. Now, we all know that stir fry sauce is somewhat thicker than other sauces, mm -hmm. and that's the job of the flour today. And what we're gonna do is take a look at this, and if you find later on that it's getting too thick, just add a little water okay. or other liquid. Sure. Now, we're going to be adding, uh, I'm gonna add about six tablespoons of soy sauce to this, and I'm also gonna be adding about three tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, I'm doubling the recipe that folks will see on the website. Okay. Just to make sure we've got plenty. Because mm -hmm. when we add this, I'm kind of going to do it by the way it looks. Okay. So we're going to see how this all looks. Mm -hmm. So right now, that doesn't look very thick, but when it gets in the heat, it will thicken up. And that's sure. when we can add a little more water okay. if we need to, or even a little more lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Fresh squeezed lemons give a great flavor. Mm -hmm. You can use the real lemon concentrate or another brand of concentrate mm -hmm. if you have that in the refrigerator. And that's a good way to thin down the sauce too okay. and add some flavor. So we got some soy sauce added to make some stir fry sauce. So. Let's get cooking, Barry. All right, okay, so what we'll... we're going to do, we're going to start with the onions, the garlic, and the mushrooms. Okay. We're going to add those Ooh, to boy. the wok. It is stir fry, so we can yeah, expect to see some popping and some things going on, and you're going to start stirring. A Ooh, wok, boy. as you notice, has a sloping side. Now, could you use another skillet? You can, absolutely, but this has some depth. And it also kind of captures your vegetables okay. so that you're working and kind of turning those back and stirring them. Mm -hmm. And notice how the, the vegetables have some room to go up yeah. the sides oh, sure. and get coated. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to stir fry those a couple of minutes or maybe less, depending okay. on how you like the texture. What we're doing right now is bringing out the garlic and the onion and flavors. You can smell it easily. Yes, <laughs> you can. So you're using two to three pods of garlic, depending on how much garlic you like. Mm -hmm. I use three large pods because garlic really makes this recipe. Okay. We're using a small onion, like this garden variety. You could add more onion if you prefer mm -hmm. that. Sure. That's the size of onion that we've got today that okay. we're using, so more or less. And you can see it's almost time to add something else when you're onions begin to get a little transparent. Okay. You don't want to overcook stir fry. Okay. All right. That's right. So now as you stir that berry, okay. I'm going to add something else here. I'm going to add 
some red peppers and some yellow peppers. Now, Good. the more you add, the more it gets a little more complicated, complicated. to stir. <laughs> but the water will cook out of the vegetables, so this will shrink. Now, do, with, we, do with we need turbs. a little more oil, do you think? Or are we um, good right now? Let's, let's, let's kind of wait and see. Okay, all right. Cody, because the secret to stir fry is you're not over cooking and making it heavy with okay. a lot of oil. Okay. It's a very, very quick technique. Look at the difference already that oh, we're yeah. seeing. Sure. Vegetables begin to cook down mm -hmm. after just uh, a minute or so. Okay. Again, two to three minutes of guy, maybe less, depending on how many vegetables you have in there. Because we don't want to overcook these. We want them tender crisp. Right. So that's already getting pretty, isn't it? It's very neat. It is. It really is. And just think about all the different vegetables in the garden that you can add to any type of stir fry. Oh, sure. Stir fry really plays on vegetables that have a lot of water content. Okay. The starchier the vegetable, the tougher it gets for stir fry. Mm -hmm. So you really want a very immature vegetable. I'm sure that everyone is seeing maybe little tiny ears of corn and those things. Yes. You know, there's a reason you're using those teeny tiny ones okay. because they're very immature and they're mm -hmm. very full of water. Yes. But they haven't developed starch. Okay. But that would be an example. If you were going to add a vegetable with a lot of starch, you would want to pre-cook it. Okay. ahead of time in the microwave okay. and make it fairly tender okay. and it should be the last thing that you're adding or maybe the first thing let me say that because okay. again that's that's more correct take a little bit longer maybe to cook the water part out it will mm -hmm. because it has less water okay and it's starchier it's thicker so gotcha, it takes gotcha. longer okay. to heat right. but look how pretty those Very vegetables pretty. Oh, are yeah. absolutely now i like things tender crisp now we're going to be adding green beans Okay, mm -hmm. and you can add all you want. I'm doing a lot of green beans here because I want green beans to be the predominant stir fry. So that's about three to four cups of green beans in this stir fry. Okay. That's a lot of food right there, Janet. I know it. <laughs> and, and that's the beauty about stir fry, Barry. You can add a little or a lot and add a little more if you want it to be a larger family dish. Mm -hmm. So you just think about your family and think about what you're doing and add appropriately. But you can see the proportion of vegetables here. Right. What we're trying to do is make sure that we mix all the vegetables and continue to steam them. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, as we said, this is going to be a great way to use fresh green beans. It's a little different from our normal way of using sure. them. I'm going to let you keep stirring there yep. because, and, and the water will begin to cook out. Now, you asked a moment ago about more oil. You can add a little bit more if you think that you are adding more vegetables. So I'm going to let you kind of pour just a little bit more okay, in sure. there and coat because we do have a lot of green beans. You don't have to use all that, but we'll just add just a little at a time. But you can add over that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that oil was previously heated, so it was a little bit warm okay. going on there. Okay. Now. If you are continuing to stir, again, we're going back to the stir fry sauce that we've already mixed up. Mm -hmm. As I said, this sauce is going to be a little thinner than the stir fry sauce that you buy in the bottle. Okay. Okay. All right. And we're going to see how this kind of cooks up because as it heats and coats the vegetables, it will thicken. Okay. The flour acts as a thickener. Okay. Very much so. Okay. But I love this recipe. Be careful with this, don't you? You, you I've have already lost to, the pepper. Have you, have you had a runaway pepper I've there, had a runaway, just one so far. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. And that's why you want a big, deep a big wok. Dish, yeah. or a, yeah, so wok. if you're using a skillet, you want to use a really large skillet, mm -hmm. an oversized skillet, because the skillet sides are not very high, mm -hmm. and it's much right. more easy to lose things right. than what we see here. Okay? Oops. So we notice that we've not added any salt to this recipe yet. Right, right. We haven't. And actually, the soy sauce is going to no, add the sodium. No, that'll provide plenty of sodium, yeah. Plenty of sodium there, too. So I like tender, crisp stir fry. Now, if you wanted, you could make this a main dish with the portobello mushrooms that we mentioned before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you could add uh, grilled chicken chunks. Yes. Again, sliced beef, mm -hmm, some flank sure. steak that you grill, some sure. leftover sliced sure. beef. You could add that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go ahead today and get this started now that we've got that finished and we're going to go ahead and pour the soy sauce over all these vegetables and we're mm -hmm. going to let that cook down, Barry. Okay. Sure. okay. So we're just tossing and coating. And I did a lot more sauce. The sauce also will act as a steaming 
agents kind of, kind of cooking it down now, and you mm -hmm. may want to turn the heat up just a little, a little bit, bit. Okay, sure. when you get that going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you like to stir fry? Oh, I love stir fry. I sure do. All right. So most certainly. What's your fave? Have you ever used green beans in a stir fry? No, I don't think I have. Well, actually, there you go. This will be a learning experience. It for is you a learning too. experience. Yeah, most certainly. Absolutely. Yeah, so we've got this ready. In a moment, we're going to be back and we're going to plate it up and we're going to add some toasted almonds to this. Toasted nuts give wonderful texture. Good deal. And we've got it going. It's a beautiful dish. As you can see, we'll let that cook down just a little bit more. Come back, plate it up, and we'll have the almonds on top. So it's a great recipe. So don't go away, but we'll be right back. It's done, and check it out. Doesn't it look it great? It does. It looks very, very good. And again, when we added the stir fry sauce, I would add that slowly, berry just mm -hmm. to make sure you don't add too much. Because, okay. you know, do it to taste. You don't want to thicken up too much, mm -hmm. and you don't want too much overpowering the vegetables. Right. Now, is but this it's the, easy. Is this the first time that you've actually tried this recipe? You know, this was the first time. I've done various stir fries. But mixing it up and trying the proportions is something I was experimenting with. Mm -hmm. so, so we've done it today for the first time. So how do you, you think see. it turned out? Well, I think it's going to be good. Again, I would back off on adding all the stir fry sauce at once. Okay. Until we see kind of how it cooks how it's down. Going to cook down. That would be one thing that I would change from what we did today. I think it's actually great that you tried it for the first time on TV because now wow. you know. You know. The, and you, you have to try yeah. something to really work out what you like about a recipe and adjust mm -hmm. it. And that's a part of cooking. Sure. That's what it is. It's not perfect. But it's, it looks great. It, it's going to taste great. If you guys want the recipe, it's oh so easy to get. You can email me at North Central. My email address there is barry.hyatt at nctc.com or simply go to our website. That address is www.nctc.com. And Janet, I think some of your office workers are thinking they want to sample some of this here in a couple of minutes. What do you think? I think they're ready for some lunchtime goodie. <laughs> Well, we're going to sample it, and we'll maybe we can give the report next Absolutely. month. Next month, how Absolutely. about that? Absolutely, we'll try that, Barry. Definitely. Sounds good. Well, thanks for your time today. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. and thank everyone for joining us. Most today. certainly. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Take care. We'll see you again real soon. Have a great rest of your day.